I really believe audio is the most stable medium and the medium of the future because, I mean, you do too because you're listening. So I'm really excited and happy to say that my memoir, What She Said and What I Heard, How One Man Shut Up and Started Listening, is now available on Audible. So you can listen to it. It cost half the price of what the book book costs. And here's a little secret. I get more money out of each audio book than I do out of the book book, which will tell you something that we'll probably be talking about in weeks to come. I hope you like it. I narrate it. My buddy Joe Kuhlman recorded it. And my friend Catherine Smith did... Um, the uh, intro and outro, the credits, that kind of thing. Uh, she's a real professional voiceover person. And Joe Kuhlman, what a prince. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. It's in my voice. A lot of people who read the book said they felt like I was sitting beside them talking to them. Well, now you can listen to it while you're on the road or doing the gardening or pulling weeds or walking the dog or commuting or whatever it is. Um, what she said and what I heard, how one man shut up and started listening. Enjoy. We love America without knowing America, without having been here before. What makes America so great that people are willing to risk their life for it? What is the sound of one man listening? This is Man Listening, a fresh podcast featuring the stories of strong women who bounce back. Man Listening. Because every woman deserves to be heard. Hi, I'm Stuart Watson, and welcome to Man Listening. You know, I started recording these conversations after I had a little moment of inspiration. And the moment said something I didn't come up with it, it just came to me that one voice can change the conversation. And too often, the national conversation recently, especially politically, has been a shout fest. Nothing but people who differ taking it personally and screaming at one another. And it is just exhausting. And so I vowed to talk to people who I would profoundly disagree with politically, but who are my friends. And one such person is Vanessa Faura. And if you take nothing else away from her life story and her conversation, it is that all Latinas are not alike. She is a unique individual, and I'm proud to call her my friend, Vanessa. Where were you born? Lima, Peru. Hospital or home? Hospital. Okay. And for your mother, your number what of how many? The youngest of seven. Oh, my word. And premature, and, by the way. <laughs> how much premature? Uh, seven months. So, what? yeah. Well, I was, she was seven months into her pregnancy right. when I was born. And Almost seven months, if, I, if I'm saying that correctly. So was there some concern that you might not make it? Uh, yeah. So my mother, uh, based from her from her story she uh she said she went to the doctor because she was having back pain really badly and the doctor told her that she was pregnant that it was no <laughs> back pain it was a baby it was her seventh you know baby and um so yeah she uh, a, a few weeks later i was born so i was pretty i was a pretty uh different surprise <laughs> well special were you close with your brothers and sisters I was. I, I still am, actually, uh, more now than ever. So yeah, it's it, it's it was a very good um, childhood for me. In while well, we lived in Peru, up until we, of course, migrated to the U.S. How old were you when you immigrated to the U.S.? Nine. What do you remember about that trip? I was very excited for a long, long time, from what I can remember, and those are the memories that I'll never never ever forget because I remember uh, my mother and my dad uh, just organizing you know we went through numerous appointments with the U.S. Embassy in Lima and it was a long way like we had to take a couple of buses even like 
uh, uh, taxis to get there because we were in Callao. Uh, so it's the port in Peru and the US embassy was probably at least an hour away um, of, of, you know, from 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 getting there from from our house to to there. I think it was not even an not an hour, probably an hour and a half. So I remember all that ordeal and getting paperwork together, mom trying to save money here and there, dad trying to uh, get even more paperwork together, notarizing it. Like I, I could remember um, a lot of frustration, but then a lot of excitement as well because we were uh, going through these appointments. And finally, I remember the, the appointment when it was the last one, we went to the US embassy and we were all there, my parents, uh, my siblings and I, and I clearly remember the <laughs> the USCIS official uh, congratulating my parents, saying you will be coming to the United States. So we were given a permanent re residency in the US. So they gave her like a big yellow envelope with all the paperwork that we needed before. Well, when we when we were supposed to arrive and go through customs. Why did your parents want to come to the U.S.? Uh, freedom and opportunity. So dad's um, job wasn't going as well anymore. And my mother always knew that she wanted to get us out of Peru to the U.S. because her sister lived here. What kind of work did your parents do? What were they interested in doing here? My mother didn't have a job. Like she would... I mean, she was she was a stay home mom. Mm -hmm. Imagine with seven kids, she had to, right? And although my <laughs> my my older two sisters were already married, um, she she still had another five five kids to look after. So she was a home state mom, uh, and my dad worked in the port in Callao, so he was a estibador. And, uh, and my mother, sometimes when things got very tight, she uh, went to neighboring countries like Ecuador and Chile and brought and bought merchandise so that she can take back to Peru and, and resell um, so that she can have a little bit more of income. But, uh, but once we came to the United States, of course, it was, it was just, they both worked two full-time jobs and they did any, everything from maintenance work to factory work. Wow. So they did what they had to do. Yes, yes. And uh, you, you mentioned, and it, it's funny that I am bringing back, back those memories because I, I try to stay away from them because I was very disillusioned when we came to the States at first. What do you mean? Uh, so way before uh, we came to the States, I, 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 I don't know if you remember Punky Brewster, the show, something similar <laughs> to, I don't know if I'm, if it, I'm sure, I mean, I've, I, I'm not that old, but, but I'm so, not so you young, think, right? <laughs> you thought the U.S. was going to be all Punky Brewster? I thought I could, I, I knew, I felt that um, I was so excited because I was coming to the United States to meet Michael Jackson and Mickey Mouse. And I was going to be, <laughs> and I was going to be living in a neighborhood like Punky Brewster's neighborhood, neighborhood. So here I am thinking, oh my gosh. And then I remember when I was even a little bit younger than that, I would be very scared at, at some point. I don't know. I don't know if it was even my house. We saw the um, the video from Michael Jackson thriller, yeah. and here I am. Uh, before when we knew we were traveling to the U.S. for the very first time, like having all this anxiety, I couldn't sleep because I was thinking, "What happens if we get the zombies coming into the house? What am I gonna <laughs> do? Like they're gonna kill us, you know?" So it, I was just so innocent, and then we hop on the plane weeks later. Well, I've I've my brother and I used to watch Punky Brewster a lot, and we love we love her. We loved her so. Um, for the first time, I see this huge bird at the airport, and I was so so scared. And um, and you know, just just went into the plane for the, for the very first time, and it was very very exciting. I mean, all all the many thoughts that I I had in my head. We were going to go to the to the United States of America. We're going to go to Gringo Land, and life is going to be beautiful. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. I'm going to have lots of friends. My house is going to be big and my bedroom is going to be amazing. And um, and I was worried about uh, 
English because I knew I didn't speak any. So I'm like, I don't know how we're going to handle that. So I had all these thoughts coming through my head. And next thing we know, it's like it's the middle of January, if I, if I can recall. And we arrived in New York and my aunt had an apartment uh, waiting for us in the Bronx, New York. So, so when I remember getting out of the airport and like feeling the cold and the freeze, it was just, it was pretty, pretty surprising because I was not expecting that at all. I believe it was even snowing. So I didn't see snow as in, oh, how beautiful. I was just so like in shock that I, I was looking at snow and I was not sure what, what it really was. Like, I remember asking my, my dad. And, um, and I was just like, so um, shocked, right? Because I'm like, what is this? Why is it so cold? Why are people not welcoming us and talking to us? And then we arrived at this little place in, in, in the Bronx, New York. And, and I just, I just felt so disappointed. <laughs> I know that sounds bad. It's funny because my kids just found out last year that I lived at some point in my life in New York, in the Bronx, New York. I've never mentioned it to them. Because I, I, you know, it's, uh, I mean, it was good at first because we had family, I had cousins, um, and they made a difference, right? They made our lives uh, better. But, but man, it was such a tough life story. I, I, I don't, I don't, I can see so many things now that I look back, how many people are held back because of being in a box. I know my parents weren't happy. My dad wanted to go back to Peru. My mother had that hope still that America was going to um, pay off at some point and that we were going to do better eventually once the kids go to school and and finish school and then they're going to get better jobs and I remember my dad always wondering but here like they didn't know anything else but that and it was it was a pretty tough time we were recently arrived immigrants um, we didn't speak any English my parents were very confused about pretty much everything. We did not have a community. We eagerly needed one, wanted one, and we didn't have that. And, um, and yeah, so it was, it was a tough time. If you ask me, it was, it may, maybe my, my family's experience might, might have, maybe it's different, right? But from, from a child's perspective, uh, and from my own personal experience, it was, it was a very, very uh, hard uh, uh, they were very hard times. Now, how did you wind up in Charlotte? Uh, oh gosh, that's a that that's that's quite a a, a story and one of the the best decisions I've done in my life. Um, I met my husband my husband when I was sixteen in New Jersey, and we dated for a couple of years. And at eighteen, I decided to get married, and I waited until I was eighteen because my parents wouldn't let me do it before then, or even at 18, they weren't happy about me marrying a, a, a Colombian older guy, right? Uh, well, he was not old, an older guy, but he was 11 years older than I was um, back then. And we decided to get married and we were just um, uh, sort of bored in New Jersey. And, and we knew, I knew, because I was already 18 and I knew that I wanted to do more. I wanted to... Um, uh, see more of the U.S. and and so did he. So we just went one day. We packed up our backpacks. We didn't have an apartment. We didn't have anything. We had just gotten married at the courthouse in in Jersey City, and went straight to Amtrak train station in Manhattan. And I remember looking through the you know how the cities rotate on the yes. you know, when you look at the cities and on they the rotate board. names on the board and and I looked up and I was like where are we going and he's like I don't know you tell me where do you want to go and I looked at and of course I I, I pronounced it because I was reading it in Spanish that was like my 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 brain process and I'm like Charlotte North Carolina I was like wow that sounds amazing let's go there <laughs> and he's like and he's like are you sure I'm like yes so we went and he said two tickets please and there was the big question that we will never forget. The lady asked back, round trip? <laughs> 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 they said, and, and, uh, what do you want? Do you want round trip? And, and he looked at me and I looked at him and I remember grabbing his hand and like, just like, you know, 
pressing hard and I'm like I don't know and he's like oh my gosh he's like Let, let's just try it uh, one way then right and then we'll see and I said I remember saying these words and he will never forget these words either here I am 18 year old immature right but then I I feel like I always knew what I wanted and I was so much in love still I am and I, I told Xavier Xavier uh, I am now your wife. I'll go wherever you want me. You need me to go unless, as long as we're together. And that was it. We arrived um, in Charlotte, North Carolina, like 18 hours later because we had stops on the way and um, took a cab. And it was so funny because here we are from up north and um, even with accents ourselves, right? We're from, from, <laughs> from Hispanics. And, and then we get a cab and there's this older guy with a chihuahua, super country. And his, <laughs> his Southern accent was just, was just very, very different. Something we have never heard before, not even in movies. And did you understand him? A little bit. We could understand him a little bit, and and maybe you we, could talk to the Chihuahua. Have yeah. the Chihuahua translate. <laughs> you know, my husband was thinking the same. He said probably the Chihuahua understands us better than, than this guy, but but the Chihuahua can't talk, right? So, but he was a very very nice guy. He took us to the nearest uh, hotel in in uptown. I remember it was a Holiday Inn. Remember on Trade Street? It's mm. no longer there. I don't know. Yeah, Never. it's been gone. So um, we stayed there for a couple of weeks and then we started looking for a quote unquote Hispanic store or Hispanic restaurant or Hispanic anything. So um, in that search, we found a very nice lady from Bogota, Colombia. My husband is originally from Colombia and she, she pretty much took us under her arm, helped us find an apartment. We moved, we had our very first apartment at Sun Valley Apartments in, uh, in uh, by our wood in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. So um, so yeah, those are, man, those are very good memories. So we, we started uh, our, our married life there. In and Charlotte. not nearly as many Spanish speaking people in Charlotte in those mm -hmm. days. Not now at all. Many, many more. Yes, not at all. I remember walking into Winn Dixie, and every time we went and we saw someone Hispanic, we would just approach them and say, "Hey, do you speak Spanish?" <laughs> um, and Winn Dixie now has been long gone. <laughs> and then, did you go back to school, or did you work, or did you do yes. both? Yes. <laughs> so I needed some more credits to in order to graduate from high school because I remember we got married, and and um, and I still had not finished. Uh, um, my senior year so I went to uh somewhat someone took asked just recommended that I go to Central Piedmont and I went there and then from there they sent me to uh, uh another uh, I'm not sure which public department it was but it was just so it was so frustrating and a lady there because she looked at me she didn't think I spoke any English she sent me to a school uh, where I can get some free ESL classes at the YMCA. So here I am walking into the YMCA thinking it's a it's a it's a college or some kind of community college. And um, they just sat me in front of a computer to learn how to say hello, where's the library? <laughs> uh, uh, where 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 do you live? And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. So fast forward, I went, I ended up at Central Piedmont and asked questions. And that has been one of my, um, uh, I guess, survival uh, things. And I asked questions and I said, no, but I don't have to get my GED if I just need some credits. I might as well just go back to high school and get my high school diploma. Like I've earned it. And I did. I went to Olympic High School and I had to do a little bit more than I, I, I expected because, you know, there was a credit thing in from New Jersey. It was a long story. So I did. So I ended up um, uh, uh, staying at, at Olympic for almost a year, like almost two whole semesters. I had um, classmates that were my age and um, for some uh, just, well, not for some reason, but <laughs> I, I don't want to say it, but for whatever reason out there, I, 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 we, I ended up in ESL uh, programs in, in high school, considering that I, I already spoke English and knew how to read and write. But for whatever reason, I was put into a uh, ESL program. So I bring that up to say that there were other Hispanic kids 
uh, with me in that in those uh, in that program. So uh, some of them had been left behind one year because of the language barrier, but they did have a language barrier. Not all of them. Some of them did. But so, you yeah. did not. You could you could write and speak English. Yes. Yes. And so had they tested you, you could have tested out of that. Absolutely. But they but, didn't. But they just put you in there anyway. Yes. Yes. Right. That was um yeah that was that I was hope a while. They don't back. still do that. I hope they don't still do that. Yeah, I I don't think they're doing that anymore. Well, I have to ask you a little bit of a rude question. Okay. Um, how often in Charlotte did people assume you were Mexican? Oh my goodness, <laughs> um, all the time. So I'll give you a, a a funny story very very briefly. I after I graduated from Olympic High School. I started uh, classes at CPCC because I didn't know any better. And that's what I was told by my counselor at Olympic that I should start at CPCC, do the two years and then transfer to a, a university. Um, I didn't know what I was doing, but I said, OK, you know, I really want to go to school. I want to go to school. I want to go to school. So um, even if, at that campus, I remember a, a guy approached me and very nice guy and we just started talking. And um, and then he asked me where I was from, and I said, "Oh, I'm from Peru originally." And he said, "Where in Mexico is that located?" <laughs> trying to trying to be like a little bit smart, like, "Hey, I want to know now where where is it on the map, right?" Like, but then he asked where in Mexico Peru was located. I said, "No." <laughs> so it's yeah. Is he so serious? He was very serious, Thor. He didn't know that um, that Peru was somewhere in South America. Like he didn't know. So I had to tell him, I said, look, you know, Latin America, you have South America, Central America, Mexico is in North America. Like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm far like, from Mexico. Let's get out a map. Let's get out a yes. globe. Yeah. Um, I also, I always wonder this, whether people are Asian, from South America, wherever. Um, can you look at someone and tell what country they're from, just based on the way they present, how they're dressed, et cetera? Um, not necessarily, uh, but you can once they speak. So if, if, you, uh, if, if you bring me and Xavier to, you know, anywhere, and there's people there, Latinos, right and they can and they hear me speak and xavier they'll know right away that xavier is colombian and they'll probably have a question mark uh with with where i'm from but they'll a peruvian any south american would know automatically i'm from peru um, how would they know that Based because on of the, the accent the okay. accent the, the, you're the tall Spanish. how tall are you five nine wow yeah you're, you're tall and it strikes me that you're taller than some uh, indigenous people in Central yeah. America. Um, and even in South America, I'm taller than my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Significantly. Well, taller. that's not a problem, is it? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and also you have this nice, beautiful uh, face, this nice, beautiful face. Oh, thank face. you. And uh, I'm just wondering if by the way people are dressed or by, by their features or their height or whatever, if you can narrow it down, you know, based on, you know, tribe or ethnicity or portion of regional differences. Can you? Um, you know what? Depends. It depends. So yes, you can. So if I was to be somewhere in Kannapolis, North Carolina, and I see a short guy, brown skin, straight hair, you know, with some specific face features, I would say, oh, that guy is from Mexico or maybe Guatemala, right? Um, if I was to be in New York or New Jersey, um, no, because it could, it could either be an Ecuadorian, a Peruvian, a Mexican, Guatemalan. So it all depends on where you are at. I know in, in North Carolina, we 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 majority of Hispanics living there are from Mexico, originally from Mexico. So it all depends on where you are at. Uh, but mainly, once they start speaking, you can tell the accents, like even from 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 Central Americans, like uh, the the Honduran speaks differently than the Salvadorian, uh, which is it's quite interesting. And then of course Mexicans speak different; uh, their their accents are just different. It's the same as in. Peruvians and Colombians, we our accents are completely different. 
how did you decide if it's not too personal to become a mom did I didn't. Always, did you always want to be a mom? Or was this, this kind of a, a surprise? God, God decided that that He wanted to make me a, a very young young mom. So Xavier and I got got married. I was eighteen, and um, a, a year later, uh, my oldest daughter uh, was born, Tiffany. So it was um, it was it was it was very very interesting. Uh, she was, she was very, she was a very hyperactive child, even from when she was a baby and her, she went through her terrible tools, but thankfully I had my sisters already down here in Charlotte, mom, dad. So it was like a, my whole family pretty much helped, uh, raise, uh, Tiffany. So mm -hmm. that was, that was a gift. <laughs> it was so a blessing. You could, could, you could go to school with a child. Yes. So mom helped uh, obviously a ton with that while I went to school. And then Xavier uh, took a changed his um, his job to second shift. So Xavier at the beginning, like the first year of, of Tiffany, right, right after she was born, the first for like the first first year and a half, um, he would I would come from school at three ish and he would go to work soon after I came so I took over and then he would go to work and then he would be back he would work through the night and come back home like super early I think it's like six o'clock in the morning seven and that's how we did it for like a whole year and a half and then my mom you know when I when I um when I got more into like my studies then my mom helped out and then my sisters here and there of course everything everything um you know uh, the good and even the 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 negatives. I I think they were just experiences that uh, let me see other things that I needed to see. Had it the bad things had not happened, then I would have never seen what needed to happen, or you know that that this this was meant to happen. So right now, now that you're mentioning that uh, Xavier and I are, I I, I say the best. Uh, time living the best time of our marriage our lives you know with our kids we live in a place that we are very comfortable and very thankful for and uh, you know, we've prayed at store we play, we prayed very hard and we worked very very hard to be where we are right now and we're happy um, we're healthy uh, our kids are doing great and um, we're living our own versions of the American dream. Xavier, Xavier and I always talked about moving to Florida and I live in Florida. Uh, just recently, I moved uh, a year ago, uh, not even, but uh, we wanted to move, eventually move to Florida and retire here. We wanted to uh, uh, have a house with certain, um, you know, certain things that, that made us happy and uh, we, we just wanted things that would make us happy as a family and always involving our kids. Uh, our oldest daughter decided to uh, move to Miami for school. So she's doing school in Miami right now. And it was, that was the best, you know, the, the opportunity for us to, to not wait. Why should we wait to retirement? We're still young. We have energy. We're strong. Let's let us just move now and, 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 and pursue, you know, the dream that we've always wanted to, to go after. And uh, so we, we, we did that little by little. It was very tough at first, but um, but we have uh, uh, done things that we thought it was going to take a lot longer, but it didn't uh, because we kind of pushed a little bit harder, uh, you know. So that's where that's where we we are at right now, and and, and job is going. My job is going well. It's 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 a new world here in miami uh more than than i had expected and in the middle of covid it has even has been even more challenging uh but that is going well uh, i have xavier home with me now more than i had ever uh <laughs> i had ever you know that thought is that a good thing <laughs> now, in miami i would imagine they're much more sophisticated it's such an international city and the capital of the caribbean and you have people speak Spanish, but they're from all over. And so are people more sophisticated there about understanding that some people come from Cuba and some people come from Mexico and Central America and some people come from South America and some people come from Spain. 
um, are people more sophisticated in the way, whether they assume someone is from Mexico, you know, or whether they treat people, you know, as part of different subcultures. There's not one homogenous Hispanic or Latino, Latina community. You know, that's a very interesting question because I, I probably had those preconceived notions before moving. I've been to Miami plenty of times before for many reasons. Um, but now that I'm, I live here, uh, I have yet to see something like that. I wouldn't be surprised if it's out there somewhere, but, you know, considering that COVID is here, it's not, you don't see like Miami beach where my, my, my uh, where we, we are currently are at, uh, it's, it's dead. I mean, it's partly dead. So it's, it's hard to tell, but I, I know, I know, I know what you mean. I, I'd say I, I wouldn't be surprised, um, but then again, you have, you, you know, you have Cubans, so many Cubans, um, and then I've seen this personally, that you have Cubans that are, you know, I guess they, they, they seem to themselves as very sophisticated because they're the very first group of Cubans that arrived in, in Miami, right? And now they have their kids here, they're born, raised here, and they've been very prosperous, very successful. And then you have other groups that are not so that are not so much. Uh, but then again, it's not just Cubans. I think it's a little bit of everything. We have a large Nicarag Nicaraguan, um, a, a large community from Nicaragua here in Miami that I I, I was not expecting that, but th there is a huge um, community here from uh, Nicaragua, and they're growing. So it's an interesting city. So educate me, this word um, Latinx or Latinx or L-A-T-I-N-X, what is that? Do you use that word? What not is that? at all, not at all. I think it's a joke. It's a total- What is it? Yeah, well, it's supposed to be um, gender neutral. Ah. And it's, it's a, a, I don't even know what to call it, but uh, every, and I've had this conversation with many, many Latinos, uh, half of them, at least half of them are offended just to the fact that they're trying to change it, it to be gender neutral and whatnot. So, and then the other half are like, they laugh at it. Um, <laughs> I've seen a couple of contacts on Facebook, on my Facebook feed that, that on my Facebook feed that they actually, it seems like they support it because they, they, um, they, you know, they, they, they're, putting Latinx, but they're not Latinos. <laughs> so well, that's it's just like, it. I don't want to, like, I don't want to offend anybody, right, but I'm not, right? you know. So I'm like, you're, you're, you're not a Hispanic or from the Hispanic descent. I don't know, but they're not, obviously they're not Hispanic. I know because I know them and they use Latinx and I'm like, where does that come from? So um, not me necessarily, because I've, I've, I've learned to be, uh, more open-minded and kind of see other people's perspective and 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 appreciate and respect them with with no problem but I work with a lot of Hispanics and um, and you know once they see that we had a, a zoom uh, uh, conversations not long ago it's probably been like five six months ago and we had a great speaker come come on and and she was speaking about uh, society and the communities and this is how we can work together to improve and blah 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 and then she mentions Latinx and and I pour in my cell phone I had like many people just texting me like she completely lost me there uh, some people like hopped off because they were like okay forget it they it was it was sad because it's like come on people like it's fine it's okay but no, they were very offended or some of them were like, forget it. I can't, I can't hear this anymore. And it had nothing to do with Latinx. She just happened to mention it because that's how she sees it, right? Like she wants to be respectful and she wants to start using the word because who, other people are using it. So she thought, or maybe she's just used to it by now. And, and, and yeah, we had, we had several people just jumping out of that conversation. <laughs> and so it seems like that we've learned, uh, I'll go ahead and say it, in the last election, especially in Miami, 
that someone who just arrived from Mexico is very different from a third generation Venezuelan American or a third generation or second generation Cuban American. You know, that there's not one big sort of pool of brown people, you know, who are all the same. They speak the same language. Oh, they speak the same language. They look the same. They're all the same. No, no, no. Very, very different depending on generation, country of origin, what part of the country they live in. You, you pretty much knew this instinctively in the Bronx, right? Um, and, and so now in Miami, you know, it seems like some people learned the hard way. You can't paint with a broad brush. Not at all. Not at all. And those are very valid, very important points. And uh, we all, we are all very different. Um, the fact that we're Hispanics and, and we come to this country, I mean, we have a lot of things in common for sure. You know, we're pursuing the American dream. We love America, even without knowing America, without having been here before uh, because of, of, of what it, it, it's promised, right? The, 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 the promise of the American dream that we all have in common for sure. We don't risk, you know, some of us even, uh, we have a lot of people risking their own lives, their children's lives to come abroad, to come down here to America. I mean, we have to uh, stop, think and analyze that. Uh, what, what makes America so great that people are willing to risk their life for? Uh, for it. And um, so that we have, we are very much, I mean, I can sit with any uh, person from Mexico, have coffee with, with that person from Nicaragua, from Venezuela, uh, you know, Ecuador, Brazil, uh, that are, they don't speak Spanish, they're, they speak uh, Portuguese. I mean, but we all have that one thing in common, although we're very different, different backgrounds, um, different ideologic, uh, ideologically uh, speaking as well. Um, we, we hold some values to be the same, right? Like we have values that are pretty much the same when it, 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 it comes down to uh, family. Um, and, and I don't wanna get into politics here, but when it comes to limiting the government, um, because we know what, what it's like to have, uh, to have to give government too much power. Uh, we know what, what happens. This is why we, we were here to begin with. Um, and, uh, and, and we hold uh, our family values to the core. I mean, that, that is it. You know, family to us is, is, is everything. Um, and, and we love God. Uh, so those, those are similarities. Uh, other things, you know, very different in other, in other things. And, and you're right. You see, you see a lot, a lot, uh, I've seen it a lot here in Miami Dade. It's incredible. I became an American because I knew how much I love this country. So, um, so I think that that is the question: How much do you love America that you want to give your life to it, no matter what? And then consider: Okay, now I'm ready to become an American. Not an American because it's convenient, or because I'm going to petition for family members, or because I want to go ahead and and get more benefits. More benefits for what? Um, America already offers you opportunities equally. Like, you know, so I, I always tell people, think about that. You have to love this country and you have to, uh, um, you have to transfer that love with your kids too. Like you have to teach your kids to love this country that before anything, they are an American. And I think there's a lack of, um, of a sense of identity in this country with especially immigrants like myself stored that it becomes a problem because they they transfer that to their kids and their kids are confused. I mean, they're like my kids, look at my kids. They they have clear who they are. They they have their roots uh, clear. They know, and they're very proud of, 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 of our heritage and, and, and where mom and dad comes from, right? I come from Peru, Xavier comes from Colombia. They have a clear understanding of who we are and that we are Hispanics and they're very proud of that. Um, in addition to that, I don't want to say however, I want to say in addition to that, they're very proud to be Americans. They know if you ask Catalina or you ask Tiffany, where are you from? They'll be like, I'm an American. Where are you from? Right. And I think there's a lack of that sense of identity that our kids sometimes have to struggle with. And that um, it's like a, 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 an effect that later uh, impacts them negatively. 
So back to your question, I don't think it's about whether it's hard or, or easy. I think it's a question of patriotism, how much you love America and how much you want it, you're willing to do for it. You know, there's one of my favorite quotes from uh, John F. Kennedy, ask not what your country could do for you, but what you could do for your country. And I think everyone should be at that phase, at, we have that mental, you know, that mentality before they even try to petition for citizenship. Do you see a strength in the diversity and the being the nation of immigrants. Absolutely. Uh, so because of that, we, we, we have so many more, more, more uh, opportunities for sure. Um, there's not a country that's, that's as diverse as the US, I, I, I don't believe. Um, you know, I've been to Europe a few times and I've been to Latin, several countries in Latin America. I, and and there, there isn't a country as diverse as America. And I think that's what makes this country so great that we have people from all walks of life, from all kinds of different nations. Um, you know, now we have first, second generation uh, from many different uh, nations. Why don't you want to talk about politics? I don't want to talk about politics because it, it's, it's what I do on a daily basis with my job. And at this point, you know, it's, it's tiring. I'm tired of politics. I'm tired of American politics. I'm not even tired. I'm exhausted. I don't have, we don't, we don't watch, we only watch TV when we have to put up Netflix or Hulu or whatever, you know, I, I've been away from the news media for a good while now and my life has been happier that way <laughs> yeah me too it's just be, it has become so hurtful i don't want to say negative anymore it's always been you know positive and negative on on both sides but now it's become hurtful and i've seen so much anger on on um on both sides that it's sad. It really saddens me because that is not the America that, that, that we, we, that we are, right. That, that is not who we are, but it's, it's been uh, put out there as, as, as the main, I, I guess, as I don't even know how to word it, but it, it is not who we are. And I know we're going to heal sooner than later. Uh, but meanwhile, I just try to stay away from from talking about it as much as I can. Not necessarily when I'm at work, obviously. My job, it's my job and I have to. But yeah, in general, I, I stay away. I've, I've, I'm doing very well uh, to bite my tongue a lot on social media. So well, I belong to organizations and I support causes which try to have civil conversations um, and I'm open to means and methods of doing that. Uh, like I feel you, I feel what you're saying. And um, I just find myself in despair a lot of times, but I do sharply limit my uh, news intake particularly in television, but in other areas. And I worked in it, as you know, for 32 years. And I find it nothing but anxiety producing. It produces nothing but anxiety and, and depression. Um, and so I am open to any conversations and methods of conversation like this one. That's why I'm doing this. Yeah. You know, because if you and I were to talk about politics or probably religion, we would agree on very, very little. But you've my you're my friend. You've been my friend for a long time. You've seen my kids grow up and um, and you and I still speak. We still go out to lunch, not as much as we should. But, you know, we're still friends. And um, I just think there should be more conversations among friends who try to understand one another as opposed to as opposed to just fight, 
Yeah, I have. That's a very good point because I do have uh, friends that uh, that don't align with what I I believe, right? As uh, as far as pol politics and policies are concerned, for sure. Um, but we don't we don't we don't hate we don't hate each other. We don't uh, get to a point where we get angry that it ruins our day. Not at all. Not at all. Um, and, and I think, Stuart, that, you know, between you and I, in quotes, uh, I think it's got to do a lot with what's here in your, heart, in your heart, right? So I see you and I've spoken, you know, with you, like I've seen you in person and we've had uh, conversations. I mean, I, I can feel, not look, but I can feel that you are, your heart, it's in a good place. I feel it. Um, and, and the same thing with me, like my family right now, we are at a place where we've wanted to be for a long time. And I have a, a, a very happy, strong marriage. Um, you know, I'm, I'm living, I, I wake up and I thank God every day because he's given me a lot more than I deserve for sure. And, and I'm okay here in my heart. So anyone can come and, and, and you know, um, and talk, have a conversation on, on politics or just anything, um, regardless of how on the other side, I may be of that person on the argument of the conversation. I, I can't, I can't get mad. I just can't. And I don't, and I appreciate that person. I, I respect that individual regardless, even if I think their way of thinking, it's crazy. And I've seen those, you know, I, I've, I've, I've had conversations with people like that, that I think I'm like, man, but that is so, and I've told them that is so crazy that you believe that, but tell me more. And I'm like, oh, okay. I see your point, but I see so much anger going on with in people that I've come to the conclusion that it has a lot to do to where they are at and 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 i mean this in a very good way uh i've i've seen so many people that are just angry with life they're angry with something is really bothering them they're unhappy about something and politics is a good you know a good way to let that anger um to them it's 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 a way of getting all that anger out and and they take it on people and i'm not saying just one side i mean uh you know any side so I think that's that's something that I've noticed a lot, especially on social media. You know, that it has revealed social media has revealed uh, revealed a lot of what people have going on inside. You took me out to lunch. You know, I en I enjoy that. I enjoy those conversations, um, and I I value our friendship. I wanted to say thank you, thank you for doing this. Uh, of I, I, I have a lot of respect for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, I don't think I would have done this with anybody else. And I don't <laughs> think I would ever do the, this ever again with anybody else. I'll probably do a follow up <laughs> with you at some point. But I trust you so much that I thought at, at first when you uh, proposed this, I, I knew then I was like, there's no way. I mean, I can't speak. I'm a bad, um, uh, I'm bad in articulating my ideas or what, you know, what some things that I want to say, I might say too much that is going to reveal, reveal like more of, 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 of me. And I was just so scared, but then I started thinking more about it and little by little, you know, I'm like, man, but it's stored. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not scared. It, every time I, you, your name came to my head or your face, I'm like, okay, I'm going to be fine. Yeah. And so it's I'm... always that, that part in me that's really bad that I always try to make things and I want them to come out perfect. And because I doubt myself that it would be perfect because obviously it's not going to be perfect. And that hinders me from doing so many things. So I took that as, I took this as an opportunity to kind of just let that feeling go. Thank you. I'm very honored by that. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Vanessa Fora and her husband Xavier live outside of Miami, Florida now in the burbs, living the American dream. And she is active in politics. She ran for local office when she lived in in Charlotte, 
and now she works in politics, but as you heard, you know, likes to leave that at the office, doesn't uh, watch the cable news 24 seven. I, I really appreciate Vanessa talking to me. Thank you so much. Man Listening is a production of Unmediated LLC in cooperation with the Queen City Podcast Network and Balto Creative Media. Allison Andrews at Andrews Creative and Rachel Clapp Miller are developmental producers. Sally Higgins at Higgins and Owens tries to keep us legal. Our music is A Day at the Park by the group Pictures of the Floating World. Your announcer is Catherine Smith. That's me. Please go to our Patreon page. You'll find us at patreon.com. Look for Man Listening, one word, no spaces. We hope you'll join us by becoming a member. A small investment can raise up the conversation. If you want exclusive member merch, like a t-shirt, we can arrange that too. A personal shout out and a big old thank you to everyone who supports Man Listening in whatever way you do, by buying books, by contributing to Patreon, or by just making a donation, uh, or just by your encouragement uh, over the years. Thank you so very much. Don't forget to support us at Patreon. We believe one voice can change the conversation. Click the subscribe button and next week you'll hear. Until relatively recently, I think it was Newton, astrology and astronomy were interchangeable. And now, and now it's like, oh, astronomy is science and astrology is, we're going to put that over there with the tarot cards and, right. and all this kind of stuff. That's next week on Man Listening. Thanks. <laughs>